I remember the moment I swiped right. The notification of the match pinged, and there she was, gorgeous and way out of my league. That should have been the first red flag. But I thought, what could go wrong? Turns out, everything. How did I go from dreaming about our first kiss to fighting for my life in a pitch black field in the middle of nowhere? And who was this hulking figure coming out of the woods all of a sudden? As I stood there, heart pounding, I realized this Tinder date was about to become the most terrifying night of my life. I was a 21-year-old rookie cop, just recently dumped and feeling invincible in that heady way only the young and inexperienced do. Tonight was supposed to be an adventure, a chance to shake off the past and embrace the unknown. I had no idea how right and how terrifyingly wrong I was. As I picked her up, my date seemed as eager as I was. She was stunning, far out of my league and her suggestion of a secluded field for stargazing sounded perfect. We drove through winding country roads until we reached the open field she had mentioned. It was a beautiful spot surrounded by woods with the occasional deer flitting through the trees. The air was crisp, filled with the scent of pine and damp earth, adding to the serene ambience of the night. During the drive, we talked easily. She seemed kind, genuinely interested in my stories from the academy, and there was nothing off about her. I started to relax, thinking this night might actually be something special. The date took a turn when I noticed dim headlights in the distance, an odd sight given the remoteness of our location. The headlights grew brighter, and soon a van was heading towards us. It pulled up in front of my car, almost blocking my way forward. My date seemed unfazed, but something about the situation put me on edge. I told her to stay in the car, grabbing my flashlight from the glove compartment. As I approached the van, a large man got out from the driver's side. He was polite, almost overly so, and explained that he owned the property and had been dealing with poachers. His voice was calm, but his eyes betrayed a hint of suspicion. He just wanted to make sure we weren't there to cause trouble. I assured him we were only there to look at the stars, and he seemed satisfied, wishing us a good night before driving off. Relieved, I returned to the car. My date was engrossed in her phone, texting nonstop, her face illuminated by the pale glow of the screen. The tranquility of the night began to settle in, and for a moment I let myself believe everything was fine but the uneasy feeling lingered like an itch I couldn't scratch. An hour later, my heart skipped a beat as headlights pierced the darkness again, this time moving rapidly towards us. The speed and intensity of the approach were menacing, transforming the serene field into a stage for something sinister. Instinct kicked in, and I moved my car to a more defensive position, the engine's growl breaking the silence. The van barreled towards us, driven by the same man from before, but now with a dangerous urgency. It swerved dangerously close, the headlights glaring and blinding. My date suddenly jumped out of the car, her movements quick and unexpected, sending a jolt of alarm through me. She ran towards the van, her earlier calm demeanor replaced with a frantic energy. Alarm bells rang in my head. This was bad very bad. I got out, issuing commands for them to back up and get on the ground, my voice strong, but my insides churning with dread. But they ignored me. The man charged at me, his massive frame a blur of aggression. He slammed into me, knocking me to the ground with a force that stole my breath. We struggled, the sounds of our scuffle piercing the quiet night, echoing off the trees. My training kicked in, and I managed to get him on his back and stand up, adrenaline coursing through my veins. Then I saw her, my date, pulling a metal pipe from the van. Her face twisted with desperation and fear. She told me they had a gun and to give them my money and truck, and I wouldn't get hurt. But I refused firmly. 
She started crying, her voice cracking with desperation, pleading that they didn't want to hurt me. The man moved towards the car, and in that moment, I made a split-second decision. I announced I was a cop, drawing my concealed firearm. I ordered them to get on the ground. The shock was palpable, freezing all of us for a moment. They finally complied, and I called 911, identifying myself and the situation. As I relayed our location, they bolted, disappearing into the woods. Against my better judgment, I chased after the man. The thrill of the pursuit and the rush of adrenaline clouded my reason. The forest was a maze of shadows and whispers, each step echoing in the stillness. Suddenly, three loud pops echoed through the trees, accompanied by muzzle flashes. Fear like I had never known washed over me. My invincibility shattered. I turned and ran back to my car, speeding away to the nearest safe location where I called for backup. When my sergeant and field training officer arrived, they were not impressed. They called me dumbass and stupid rookie as we headed back to the field. The van was still there, a grim reminder of my near disaster. I was told to stay in the car as they approached, clearing the area cautiously. When they returned, their faces were ashen. They told me to come look. The back of the van was a horror show. Knives, duct tape, lighter fluid, handcuffs, and what looked like dried blood. In the front, an AR-15 style rifle and two handguns lay within easy reach. My heart pounded as the reality of my brush with death sank in. We called for immediate backup and detectives. Further investigation revealed that the blood wasn't real, but the stolen plates and van were part of a more sinister plot. The implications of what could have happened that night left me shaken to my core. I learned a lesson I won't soon forget. The thrill of online dating wasn't worth the risk, and the invincibility of youth can be dangerously deceptive. Never again would I let my guard down so easily. Never again would I trust so blindly. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please like if you did and subscribe to watch my future videos.